Welcome friends, today we're going to be talking about the top 10 free-to-play MMO. Right, so my name is Skyland, I like playing MMO, but I have to admit, I haven't played every MMO to end game, but what some games that I truly do enjoy playing, as casually at least, is going to be the free-to-play MMO market. Not just MMORPG, okay, this list is going to be a little bit more eclectic, but we're going to really focus on that free-to-play component, okay, because that's kind of what I specialize in personally, and even then, still, I haven't played all these games to the fullest extent, so this is going to be a community effort. Please let me know in the comments below what you guys think and feel, but for what I know and understand, these games can be experienced without spending any money, okay? You can actually grind and earn everything playable in all of these games. Hopefully, kind of. If I'm wrong, please let me know. Uh, but anyways, yeah, so if you want some really good MMO content for free, you know, this is it. This is the list. So let's get into it. Okay, so the first game I'm going to suggest you play is going to be a very niche title, and it's a game called Star Trek Online. So if you are a fan of the shows and the movies, then this is probably going to be your game. In fact, you might not have known that the game actually expanded to Xbox One and PlayStation 4. It's really flying under the radar here. It's not that bad of a game, and you know, for its age, it's pretty freaking good. It's just like five years old or something like that. But anyways, the game is getting consistent updates. It's got a really nice, tight-knit community, and a lot of people who play MMOs are really in it for that community effort. So a game as niche as this even though it might not be as massively popular as others, is actually doing really well for itself, and I think you owe it to yourself if you have any hint, you know, a, a glimmer in your eye at all for the universe of Star Trek Online, because hey, actually the story of this game is a little bit canonical, or at least it follows the canonical story, then yeah, you should at least try this game, because again, it's free. Next up on the list is going to be a very similar situation, and that is going to be The Lord of the Rings Online. Yep, another niche title that's focused completely on a very hardcore fandom, okay, here. So it's going to be The Lord of the Rings Universe. If you're a fan of the books, maybe the movies, then yeah, you're, you're probably going to have a good time. You're going to fit right in here with this community. But I do want to kind of touch on the free-to-play factor for Lord of the Rings because there, there are expansions and updates, I do believe. But I believe also, very similar to Guild Wars 2, you earn that sort of premium currency through playing the game. So eventually, if you want wanted to really like be dedicated to playing free to play then you could eventually unlock everything playable in the game just from yeah playing the game so lord of the rings online as an mmo exactly for every reason why i kind of you know praise star trek you're probably gonna enjoy this game Okay, so next up on the list we have Rift. Now this is a game that I don't have too much experience with myself, so please let me know if the end game is worth it. All I know is that there is a very awkward introductory stage to, uh, you know, this MMO. And as a free-to-play game, it seems uh, very welcoming, I do believe so. It's just that, you know, for me personally, it just didn't fit my taste. I think this is going to be a game that is going to be kind of polarizing to a lot of people. Not just because of, well, in previous games that we talked about, you know, their fandoms. It's just that we've kind of seen a lot of the stuff that it does in other games. However, you know, all those things are pulled into this game. And so if you yourself get pulled into the game, you'll have a wealth of things to do even as a free player. Yeah, you can do everything in the game apparently, so that's pretty neat. But I will say again, it kind of resembles some other games. Most directly, it was uh, competing with World of Warcraft at the time. Of course, we saw what happened. It fell from grace and went free to play and now has it reclaimed some glory. I know it's not a bad game. I don't know if it's for everybody though. Please let me know in the comments. Alright guys, so next on the list we have a two for one. I believe that neither of these games really deserve a single slot on this list. Uh, I think both of them are amazing games as a whole, and their free-to-play content that is specifically made for free-to-play players that kind of limits them, that content is also uh, like very, very generous, I think, and very good. But this is a list about, you know, playing and living inside of these MMO worlds and these communities for free, you know, persistently. Now, both of these games do offer options in order for you to actually play their expanded content or, you know, their subscriptions service, uh, you know, unlock the future content, you can do that as a free-to-play player through, you know, in-game currency exchange. But at the same time, these games don't make it very easy to do that at all for a free-to-play player. They give you very specific restrictions as a free player to limit your gold income, which is what you kind of need in order to purchase the subscription service in RuneScape and the gems in Guild Wars 2 to upgrade to the expansion. So because of that difficulty, I'm not going to put these games very high on the list. And in fact, I'm just going to put them both in the same slot. Think this is going to be a good point for contention and controversy yeah in the comments below but uh i don't know i like both of these games and they do allow you to play for free technically so let's hash it out in the comments below yeah, yeah, now following that, uh, let's talk about Arcage, a notoriously pay-to-win uh, free-to-play game. So Arcage is free-to-play, though. You can play all of the playable content, you know, mechanical content that you can actually enjoy and consume. You can do that for free. However, I think that the debate comes from, uh, you know, the fact that the game is pay-to-win. You can actually get things that boost you as a player, that, that give you bonuses. And because it's a sandbox game, because it does have this, like, ecosystem and, you know, there, there's a lot of, like, intricacies to Arcage that um, it makes it kind of awkward and really 
hard to sort of justify putting it on a list like this, but I think since it is also a sandbox, you can enjoy it in a number of different ways. And like I said, technically you can experience all the content for free. It does belong on this list. Maybe not so high, but it does belong on this list. And especially for first impressions as a free to play player, it's fun. But to continue to um, stay and sit in this community and enjoy it with everyone else, with this whole pay to win thing hanging over your head, it might be a little bit dubious, but still, it's at least worth checking out. All right, now halfway on the list, we have a game called Planet Side 2. Yeah, you can actually play this for free on PlayStation 4 as well as PC, but Planet Side 2 is a game that I kind of have a little bit of a history with. Um, I actually made a couple of videos talking about it, and every time I did like a review or a re-review, first impression, whatever, um, I felt like it was kind of grindy slash pay to win-ish. Now, technically, I know it's not pay to win, but it is a PvP game only. It is an MMO FPS. Original, yes, really cool game. You're not gonna get another experience like it anywhere else, free to play or otherwise. But the thing is, is it throws you in with like all these other players and you know there's all these vehicles all these classes all these weapons the customization there's a lot to do but it's kind of gated behind a tremendous amount of grind and so since it is directly pvp and with that grind added in you are going to feel kind of not very good as a free-to-play player i know myself i was forced in order to play a specific role with my group of players i had to spend money to unlock a certain item so that then i could you know fulfill my role in the group not everybody's experience is going to be like that i'm just saying that's you know that that feeling that vague you know, awkwardness, that sensation of inferiority that will permeate your being as a free-to-play player. That's the reason why it's not higher on the list. Next up on the list, we have a game called Blade and Soul. And I just want to say from here on out, there is absolutely nothing wrong with any of the monetizations in these games. So yeah, I'm just going to talk about the games. Blade and Soul, dude, it's a, a kung fu fighting MMO. Now, I think some people will not enjoy this game. It really depends on your ping. If you have good internet, good ping with the servers, then you're going to have fun with this game. I mean, of course, also, it's, it might be a little bit niche because of the art style. It's also a six years old game that was, uh, you know, meant for a completely different audience entirely. But it finally came to the West and I think it looks good for its age. I think it plays well. Again, it's just really about that that latency, okay? Because it is a kung fu, and it really feels more like a fighting game, okay? I mean, it is an MMO, but it's like a fighting MMO, okay? Based on combos, and you really need to be accurate with, you know, precise with the timing, and that's really the only thing that I can say about the game. Um, it's really more of like, a, I guess, there's two halves of the game. You have the hardcore arena PvP, and then you kind of have like the story, you know, the, the cinematic story, which is pretty good. And then, you know, there's a, there's a little bit of dungeons, but you really play this game for the PvP, and luckily, you know, that's completely fair and balanced if you have good ping. Number three on my top 10 list is going to be Wildstar. I put it pretty freaking high up because honestly, I think it deserves the spotlight. Wildstar is a game that launched as a AAA boxed with subscription game, okay? So lots of money was poured into this and would require of you to actually participate in the game. It was supposed to be focused on end game rating and it still kind of has that niche. It is, it does have a little bit more of a difficulty scale toward the end of the game, which is pretty hype, honestly, but that directly contended with World of Warcraft in art style, in gameplay. It was really trying to pull from that. So that's really why. It, it kind of failed there, which is really tragic, honestly. But Wildstar now actually has a very worthwhile amount of content to play through, and it's all completely free. It's just kind of like cosmetic, aesthetic, and just, you know, quality of life kind of stuff if you want to, you know, spend money on the game. But entirely wholly, Wildstar is a great game, especially if you're looking for something that's similar to World of Warcraft, but with a little bit more, I guess, bite to it. It's a little bit more action-based. A story of David and Goliath, except this one didn't turn out so pretty. And coming to number two, we have a game called Terra, which is an action combat MMORPG that focuses on end game group content, very similar to Wildstar. And I'm not actually putting it higher than Wildstar on this list. Like a lot of these games can actually be, you know, swippity swapped all over the place. It doesn't really matter. But Terra and Wildstar, they're so high on the list because they focus on end game content. And that's really where a lot of people, they, they people who are looking for lists like this, they want to know what content, what games can I explore and play for free and, you know, truly enjoy and immerse myself in these communities in Wildstar. Star and Terra being hardcore end game games that allow you to play the end game and constantly expand on it for free. Yes, they're going to be high on the list. So yeah, Terra is basically very similar to Wildstar in a lot of ways, um, but aesthetics completely different. And it's it's called action combat. It's actually more similar to tab targeting than a lot of people would be comfortable admitting. But if you play certain classes and play certain roles and whenever you're fighting certain bosses, it really does feel maybe something like an action RPG like Dark Souls. It can feel completely different at times. So yeah, guys, I just want to say, depending on whatever aesthetic tastes or biases you have, Terra could be an amazing game. 
All right, guys, my number one is going to be Trove. Oh, yeah, man. I love this game. I absolutely love it. It's a casual game. It does not focus on end game rating or anything like that. OK, and there's really no expansion or, you know, there, there's no like actual limiter for new free players or just new players, period, to have to be like purchased to actually enter that. No, the game is completely focused basically on that like early game content on the early casual leveling experience, you know, just trying out new classes constantly, consistently, like going and doing new things, going to new areas, but not exactly like going further out and, and, and doing like, you know, the end game, which is locked away somewhere and you have to go through all these loops or something or eventually pay money. No, that is not the case. Trove is a lighthearted, fun game. In fact, I seen Ashley put it as a number one on her casual MMO list. I completely agree. It's a very fun game to jump into, jump out of. There's really no weight. There's nothing on your chest and no sort of despair at all. Like there's nothing in the game that really incentivizes you to spend money except for cosmetics, really, and get, getting those faster, actually. So yeah, you don't feel any sort of tension or incentivization to actually purchase anything or spend money immediately when you start the game you are already in basically the meat of the game you're already deep inside what the game is trying to offer you and you're already having fun and so for that I put it at number one all right, guys, I just want to say thank you very much for watching my newest top 10. I do a lot of these. I try to do them daily, try to get them out. I really love sharing the love, sharing these games and my love for them, and hopefully yours too, yeah? Community effort, like I said. So if I'm wrong about anything or if there's anything I missed, or, you know, you just want to add on a little bit, you know, tell us your experiences, you know, it'd be pretty cool, pretty fun, then yeah, do so in the comments below. So guys, keep the hype alive, thumbs ups, comments down. My name's Skylant, and hopefully I'll see you around.